Hello everybody, it's Curiosity and welcome back to the physics of free will. I hope you saw my video on Einstein's block universe. If you haven't, click on that information thing right around there. So, in a block universe, the universe is predictable, isn't it? Well, yeah, theoretically, it does seem to be predictable. Take a bowling ball, for example. You know, the weight of the bowling ball, the force of gravity, the density of air, and the height of the balcony from which the bowling ball is to be dropped. We can put all these things together in a system of equations, which could be used to find out how fast the bowling ball will fall on the ground, or the time at which, or the force with which it will impact the ground. Well, then the universe seems to be predictable, isn't it? Not so fast. If that's true, then why do we have such a hard time predicting much of the future? It's because much of the universe is not as simple as the bowling ball example. It's a whole lot messier. Even Newton was troubled by the three-body problem. Although calculating and predicting the motion of the Earth around the Sun was quite easy, but add another body, say the Moon, and it became virtually impossible to calculate with 100% accuracy their future states of affairs. Newton told his friend Haley that the motion of the Moon gave him headaches and kept him awake. A couple of centuries later, even André Poincaré came to the conclusion that there was no simple solution to the three-body problem. Poincaré discovered what came to be known as the chaos theory. Take the weather for example. There are a lot of variables involved. Temperature, pressure, humidity, direction and strength of the wind, the rotation of the earth, and a lot of other factors. A perfect weather prediction would require highly accurate measurements of all of these contributing variables over every centimeter square of area we are looking at in the atmosphere. In a system like this, tiny errors in measurement could result in huge fluctuations in the calculated result. Tiny changes of the input in even one of the many contributing variables would mean a large variation in the output. Chaotic systems magnify even the tiniest of changes in the component parts of the system. This is commonly known as the butterfly effect. The idea that a butterfly flapping its wings in Brazil could cause a tornado in Texas. But really, is that possible? Mind you, that the flutter of the wing of the butterfly isn't what causes the tornado, but millions of tiny interactions in between, which wouldn't have occurred if it burned for that flutter. This is the unpredictability of chaos. This kind of behavior is seen everywhere in nature, from the cloud patterns, ocean currents, the effects of air and water turbulence, to the growth and decline of animal populations, epidemics and pandemics too, like the spread of this dreaded coronavirus, and also the firing of neurons in your brain, which will determine what your decisions are. So, we can notice that even tiny changes in the initial conditions can lead to huge changes overall in the future. Had the driver of the car of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria not taken the right or rather the wrong turn, he would not have been assassinated and the World War I would not have started the way it started. Had James Tandy allegedly not decided to spare Adolf Hitler during the First World War, the Second World War wouldn't have happened the way it happened. Had Alexander Fleming not left this lad a mess and gone for holidays, penicillin wouldn't have been discovered and millions of lives probably wouldn't have been saved. Jonas Salk developed the first polio vaccine. Had he not discovered that at the time he did, the entire population of the planet today would be completely different. Some people wouldn't have even been born. Even you wouldn't have been born had that particular... Uh, never mind. The whole phenomenon and field of study of chaos has its roots in differential equations and dynamical systems, the very language that is used to describe how a physical system evolves. A dynamical system involves one or more variables that change over time according to autonomous differential equations. For example, let's say there's a system that has two variables, x and y. X dot is the rate of change of X as time changes, and Y dot is the rate of change of Y as time changes. The differential equations that describe X dot and Y dot don't actually involve T and only contain X and Y as variables. 
This makes them autonomous. Each combination of X and Y only corresponds to one combination of X dot and Y dot. As a result, this is a very convenient geometrical and visual way of representing a dynamic system known as the phase space. This is a Cartesian space where the axis are the system's variables. In 1961, American meteorologist Edward Lorenz was using an LED desktop computer to model weather patterns. He was developing a simulation for atmospheric conditions which involved two changing variables. After running the simulation, he wanted to repeat it, so he put the same numbers into the computer. But to his surprise, the outcome was totally different. Why? In the first simulation, Lorenz had entered the pressure value in the equation to six decimal places, but in the next attempt, as a shortcut, he rounded it off to just three decimal places. Lorenz had expected that a difference as small as 0.000127 would not have much impact, but it did. The new run followed the old one for a short while, but then it diverged and drastically changed the output, and the new weather pattern he obtained was completely different and unexpected from the first one. Lorenz simplified the model down to just three equations and three variables, which is represented as a toy model of convection. The Lorenz equations have a few parameters that can be tweaked to alter the behavior of the system, but we'll be using values of 28, 10, and 8 divided by 3. This simplified model describes convection cycles in the atmosphere and is known as the Lorenz system. Lorenz's system displayed what's scientifically known as sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Okay, then let's pick any point as our initial state and see how it evolves. Does our point move towards a fixed attractor or a repeating loop? Doesn't seem to. In truth, our system will never revisit the same exact state again. Here we have actually started with three closely spaced initial states and they have been evolving together so far, but now they have started to diverge. From being close together, they end up on totally different trajectories. This is sensitive dependence on initial conditions in action. Small changes in the initial condition creating large changes overall. Lorenz and his team found that when they ran the weather simulation over and over with slight variations in input resulting in vastly different results, when you visualize these patterns, the parts never overlapped, but at the same time, the parts seemed to circle these areas of space. The simulation forms the shape of a butterfly. This pattern is an example of what's called a strange attractor and one thing that differentiates a chaotic system from random behavior. So it's not the butterfly in Brazil that the theory is named after, it's just a memorable example as the pattern it forms looks like a butterfly. Chaos become order. The system initially may look disorganized, but there's a set of rules that apply to the chaos, deterministic chaos. Apparently, however unpredictable they may be, chaotic systems are ultimately orderly, showing that at the end of the day, they too follow a set laws of nature. Complex systems may appear chaotic at times, but they are ultimately ordered. From the butterfly effect, what we should really think of is understanding order from chaos. The original model Lorenz was looking at appeared to portray disorder or chaos until it was graphed and it started to look like an orderly butterfly. Anyway, how well can we predict the future? Not very well, at least when it comes to chaotic systems as there are a lot of variables involved and at different points of space and time. The further into the future you try to predict, the harder it becomes. So the next time it unexpectedly rains during your vacation trip, don't blame the meteorologists. Blame chaos. But does chaos theory save us free will? Agreed that chaotic systems are unpredictable, but are they non-deterministic? No, just take the predictability away, but they are still deterministic. The systems are ultimately orderly, given the initial conditions and the laws of nature, the future is still long.
just means that in practice we won't be able to predict the future of some chaotic systems with 100 percent precision for us prediction is difficult in chaotic systems because it's difficult to get all the information at all times but good old laplace steven could still predict our decisions but it could be only in such a way that it does not interact with us and does not influence our decisions because its interaction would change our decision your brain with which you make your decisions might be partly chaotic but chaos is still deterministic and laplace's demon could be able to predict your decisions beforehand the future is locked given the present and you do not have the freedom of the will to change it so deterministic chaos would still mean that free will doesn't exist i hope you enjoyed this episode of physics of free will in the next one i'll talk about quantum physics and what it means for our free will albeit a chaotic mess i've been curiosity and I'm out of here like a butterfly.